Hello YouTube. I wanted to spend a few minutes discussing the unary phase diagram and answering the question of what important information can we get from phase diagrams other than the triple point. There are many types of phase diagrams that show different phases that matter can take over a variety of conditions, but the unary phase diagram shows the phases that can be present for a single pure substance at various temperatures and pressures. Along the x-axis of the diagram, we have temperature, and along the y-axis, we have pressure. And uh, as we mentioned earlier with the triple point, that's right here, front and center. And uh, this is a unique temperature and pressure for each uh, substance in which all three states of matter can kind of simultaneously coexist. And uh, if you were slightly bumped out of this point along the temperature or the pressure, you would either move into um, you would move into one of these phases. As to what more you can learn from a phase diagram uh, besides the triple point, there are three lines on phase diagram which show various phase changes. And this line between a solid to a liquid shows where you would expect freezing to occur going from liquid to solid or melting to occur when going from a solid to a liquid. The line down here between liquid and gas is where evaporation occurs in one direction, going from liquid to gas, and where condensation occurs in the other, going from a gas to a liquid. The last line down here, at lower temperatures and pressures between a solid and a gas, shows where sublimation would occur when a solid changes to a gas without a liquid state, and deposition occurs when a gas becomes a solid without a liquid state. The last point up here, at higher temperature and pressure, is the critical point. This is a specific temperature and pressure in which the heat of vaporization is zero and the boundary between a liquid and a gas phase disappears. The state that exists above this, the critical point, is called a supercritical fluid. Um, a supercritical fluid has a properties of both li a liquid and a gas. It can effuse through solids and it can fill up any volume like a gas. Um, but it can also dissolve materials like a liquid. In fact, supercritical fluids dissolve things very well and are commonly used to dissolve caffeine out of coffee beans or other extracts out of plants without using any potentially harmful solvents. Unary phase diagrams are also important in thermodynamics because we're working with dynamic systems and uh, have fluids doing work and transferring energy over a variety of changing conditions. A diagram like this really helps conceptualize how a material behaves at conditions that can be very different than the ones that we live in every day. I have a handful of um, example phase diagrams here to discuss. And uh, the first one here is water. Water is a good phase diagram to discuss as we see and live with the phase changes of water on a daily basis. Um, we can see here the slope of the line between the solid and the liquid um, slopes in a way that the freezing point of water decreases as the pressure increases. This is actually opposite to how most materials behave and I think it's kind of interesting to think about because if you were to isothermally decrease pressure at around 0 0.005 C, you could pass from a liquid to a solid to a gas, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also see that we wouldn't expect to see sublimation of water unless we got below 0 0.006 atmospheres. And uh, the critical point is uh, pretty high. It's 217 um, atmospheres and uh, 374 um, degrees Celsius. The next phase diagram is CO2. And uh, I chose this one because um, most of us know that CO2 sublimates at um, atmospheric pressure and that a block of dry ice will become a gas without melting. Um, also, if you work with CO2 tanks, it's usually stored um, pressurized as a liquid and you can hear it sloshing around in a tank um, even though it's never a liquid at atmospheric pressure. Um, also, the critical temperature and pressure for CO2 is pretty low at uh, 73 atmospheres and only 31 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's just above room temperature. Um, this makes it fairly easy to work with as a supercritical fluid. And there's even some videos out there of CO2 changing from a liquid to a supercritical fluid stored in a glass container. It's very usable at these temperatures and pressures for the non-toxic caffeine extractions. 
that we talked about earlier. And there's also a lot of research going on with uh, supercritical CO2 being used in some power cycles. The next phase diagram I wanted to talk about is acetone. And uh, this one isn't particularly exciting, but I just wanted to include a solvent and I wanted to show that this line that goes between solid and liquid is usually sloped opposite to water in which at higher pressures, the melting point would increase. Um, this also has a um, critical point in which it's at a lower pressure than CO2, but it's at a uh, quite a bit higher temperature, and uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. The last thing that I wanted to come to before ending this video is just water again. And this is just a more complex phase diagram. And this diagram shows the various phases that can exist within ice. Ice can form, I think, like 18 different crystalline phases and three amorphous phases that have been discovered. Uh, but most of these are at very um, exotic temperatures and pressures. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful and you learned something. Thank you for viewing.